at Cornerstone Family is Pastor Chris, and we're week three in our series called Stronger Together, 40 Days of Community. And I want to uh, welcome you if this is your first week. I, I hope you have your workbook. We're on page 36 and 37 in your uh, workbook of Stronger Together, uh, 40 Days of Community. How many people have been uh, watching cop movies lately or police catching bad guys. And I, I want to use that as, as an example because um, uh, why do they go after the bad guys? Because they have a badge, right? Uh, but more importantly, it's because they have the authority to. Uh, as Christians, we have the authority as well. We have the authority of Christ and the Word of God to uh, back us up. Uh, we, have, uh, we also have some backup of our own. Uh, we have the body of Christ, and I want to talk about that today, that we need each other uh, because we're stronger together. This is what the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes 4.9. It says, two are better than one uh, because they have a good return on one another. If either of them falls down, uh, one can pick the other one up, uh, but pity the one who has no one to pick them up. Um, also, if two lie down, they keep each other warm, uh, but... But how can one keep themselves warm? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And then it says this, a cord of three is not easily broken. Uh, right now, I am in the midst of a remodel of my kitchen. We had some water damage in our kitchen. And so uh, I'm doing the work myself because that's what I can afford. And uh, it, it's been a long two months. I promised Linda that I'd be done by Thanksgiving. So I had to call in backup. I had to call some of my friends who are, uh, have more experience, uh, who, uh, who are gifted at some things that I'm not, and they came in to help me out so that I could get this project of remodeling our kitchen done. Uh, John 3 says this, uh, John 13, 34, it says this, A new commandment I give to you to love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my, com my disciples, if you have love for one another. Uh, the reason that God has blessed us is so that we could be a blessing to others. I had a friend come over with some tools, and I, uh, I said, why, why do you have all these tools? And I loved his, his answer. He said, I have these tools to make friends. What a great way to look at life. Uh, what Jesus is saying here in this scripture is that our number one characteristic of being a Christian is how we love one another, how we show it, that we're blessed so that we can be a blessing. And so here's the lesson on page 37 of your 40 Days of Community. We're going to go through this together. Number one is this, love always protects. It always protects. How do we protect each other? Well, we pray for each other. Uh, we can um, uh, come along each other when someone is in need. We can protect each other. Uh, we can protect each other's confidentiality. When someone's going through a difficult time and they share that in prayer, uh, nothing will destroy a fellowship, a friendship, a life group uh, than more quickly than gossip. Here's what God's Word says in Proverbs uh, chapter 11, verse 13. It says, A gossip betrays confidence. But a trustworthy person keeps the secrets. Do you? Are you able to keep secrets? Are you able to keep confidence with, with people, what they share with you? You don't tell anybody else? You just keep that to yourself? That's an important question. It reminds me of three pastors who went fishing together and they began confessing to each other their shortcomings uh, of their struggles in life. And the first pastor said, you know, I'm I'm really glad to be with you guys. Uh, I have to confess something. I'm really greedy. Every time the offering comes through, I just worry and I wonder if it's going to be enough. And the second pastor uh, kind of shook his head and he said, you know, my issue is this, is from a young age, from a young man, I, I had, I've always had my eye on women and I need prayer for a lustful eye. And the third pastor kind of snickled and he said, well, uh, you know, my problem is gossip, but I can't wait to get home and, and let loose. <laughs> uh, how you are with people, keeping confidence, not gossiping, allowing people to know that you're trustworthy, defines a friendship. This is what the Bible says. Love always protects. Uh, uh, the definition of protect is to cover over in silence. Isn't that good? A gossip is talking about a person in a situation when we're not a part of the problem and we're not a part of the solution. Why are we talking about it? 
Gossip is a sign of low self-esteem and also of an immature Christian character. This is an area that each of us needs to hold on to. This is what happens so often in church. We don't talk to people uh, in front of their face. We're not mean. We just go out into the parking lot on the way out of church and we talk about people. And we just can't do that. We've, we've got to hold people up. God puts gossip at the same in the same list of adultery and murder. Why is that? Because when we gossip, we murder somebody's character. We destroy their ability to have a good name and to have a good reputation in the community. Um, what do I do when I hear someone gossip? I, I usually do this. I just steer the conversation in a positive way about that person. That usually works. Uh, maybe you can try that this week. Uh, number two in our uh, book is this. Love always trusts. Love always trusts. The word for trust is to believe. It's to have faith, right? They all are in that same category. We believe each in each other and we believe for each other. Let me explain what I mean by that. When we believe each other, it builds trust. Uh, let me give you an example. And maybe uh, someone in your life has betrayed your trust. That's our opportunity to remember what Jesus has done to us when he forgave us on the cross. So we keep believing in people just as Jesus has kept believing in us. Even though he went to the cross willingly and lovingly, he forgave. Um, many times in our staff meeting, one of us will be late. And it's funny how we do this, right? Uh, on a weekly basis, we think about that one person that's late. And we said, oh, that person is always late. We just talk about them in front of everybody. And I said, wait a second. I mean, maybe there's something uh, going on. Maybe they got a ticket on the way to uh, to the staff meeting. Maybe uh, maybe they had something going on at home. Maybe that's something they couldn't control. But uh, more often than not, it's just that they're just late. Uh, but but friends believe in each other. They hold each other up. Uh, this is a really important part of building trust with one another. We speak good about each other. We want to be friends who have faith. And their friends, and always think of, of them and hold them up and encourage them in a positive way. This is how Jesus uh, talked about it in uh, Matthew chapter 9. This is uh, verse 1 and 2. It says, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and he came to uh, his own town. And some men brought him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. And when Jesus saw their faith, check this out, he said to them, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Um, and then he healed him. There are many times in our lives we can't get there in faith. We're paralyzed because of what we're going through, these difficulties that we, we see in our lives. It's in those times that we need friends to believe where we don't have the faith to believe for ourselves. Have you been there? Uh, have you been in a situation where you just don't know if you, if you can go on, if you have the faith to hold on? That's when you need a trustworthy friend. Sometimes it's the faith of a stronger brother and sister in this world that gets us there. Um, we need those types of friends. Number three in our list is this, love always hopes. It always hopes. This is what really builds community and fellowship within the church. When we see a friend uh, that's attempting to grow, we want to encourage them, right? Uh, we want to lift them up. Real love always hopes for the other person that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Why is that? Um, someone gets a new car and we question their financial character, right? Someone uh, does something in, in uh, uh, they, they get a new outfit and, and we look them up and down and we judge them. Why do we do that? Uh, we want to be a true friend. A true friend always cheers on a friend when they're succeeding in life. A real friend loves that person and wants them to do well. Are you that type of friend to somebody? We need friends when we have problems as well. But another thing that is terrible is when we do something well, we succeed and we accomplish, but we don't have anybody to, to, uh, to hold us up, to encourage us when we're doing well. Uh, we want friends, the type of friends that are going to pull for us, that are going to cheer for us, that are going to pray for us, that are always going to believe in us. Uh, love always hopes. Uh, in a world that's discouraging, let's be the type of people who are encouraging. Amen. Here, here's the final point. Love always protects. Love always protects. The word perseverance is kind of a crazy word. Uh, excuse me. Love always perseveres. Uh, uh, love always perseveres is number four. Uh, the word persevere is really a crazy word. Um, it means um, perseverance uh, means that uh, you've gone 
through something difficult. It's not perseverance until you feel like quitting. Have you been there? If you don't feel like quitting, then it's just normal life. It's what you do. But when you want to quit and you don't quit, that's perseverance. Listen, love always perseveres, the Bible says. It goes that extra mile. It hangs in there. Love walks in when everyone else walks out. We need to call for backup sometimes. We need to drop what we're doing and help a friend out sometimes. Uh, in a relationship in the community, there's going to be times where we want to give up and when we want to leave. There, there are those people, when something happens, when their feelings get hurt, they just get up and they leave church. You know those people? Uh, they go somewhere else and they just keep going from church to church. Uh, we, we can't be that type of person. You can't be that way in your life. There's no relationship that's worth having where you're not worth, you're, you're not worth getting, getting hurt over. Uh, we have to be people that persevere, that never quit, no matter what happens. Even if our feelings get hurt, we persevere. Um, the, the people closest to you are going to hurt you the most. That's how life is, unfortunately, right? Uh, when you are dri driving, diving into your faith, when you're going uh, deeper into your faith and trusting God and trusting people, you're going to get your feelings hurt every once in a while. It's inevitable when you're, when you're diving in close in your faith. We will always get hurt by the people who are closest to us, whether it's intentional, many times it's unintentional. But listen, the Bible says love perseveres. It doesn't give up. It hangs in there. Let's look at a couple scriptures. Proverbs 17, 1 says it this way. Better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife, right? Uh, Proverbs 18, 25. The words of the uh, of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. I love that. It's a great one. We need to make up our minds that those are the kinds of relationships that we're going to have, that we're loyal, even like a brother, uh, like closer than family. Uh, many people fall down in this area, in their friendships, in a life group, in their church, because they fear commitment. We need, we need to get over the fears and commit to relationships, right? Uh, Romans 12, 5, Paul says this, So in Christ, uh, though many, we form one body, and each member belongs to the other. That, to me, this is an amazing scripture. We're many parts, but we form one body. We all belong together. And, and, and I want you to belong. I want you to belong to church, a cornerstone. I want you to belong in your life group. I want you to belong to some Christians around you. Uh, and so here's the challenge. Don't just attend Cornerstone, belong. Don't just attend your life group, really belong. Have some friendships that you belong to. God always wants you to have close, meaningful relationships that are satisfying and add to your life, that are life-giving. He wants you to protect. He wants you to trust. He wants you to hope, and he wants you to persevere, never quit. And many of us want friends like that, but listen, we have to be first a friend like that. Uh, I have to provide that for other people. When we can... Uh, when we uh, are a friend for other people, then they'll be a friend to us. It's a bar. They belong to us and we belong to them. And you'll find that you belong to others and they belong to you. That's a powerful community. And that's the type of family, church family, that we want to be here at Cornerstone. And I, I just want to close with this. What's the greatest way that you can help someone out? What's the greatest way you can be a friend? It's simply this. Introduce a friend to Jesus. Just bring it up in your conversation. It might be, hey, how, how can I pray for you? It may be that you may, you may be the only Jesus your friend knows and, and the way that you act with them. Or how about this one? Uh, nine out of ten people who say that they, are, uh, that they, they, they would be asked to go to church or to a life group would go if someone would ask them. Be that friend who invites you, your friend to know Jesus, to to be a part of your life group or to come to Cornerstone to worship. The greatest thing that you can do for a friend who is far from God, who don't know and belong to a church, is to invite them to church and to be the kind of community that is a friend to others. Um, that's what we want to hear and we want here at Cornerstone. Uh, you can invite them to church, to your life group, or sit them down and just tell them because you love them, you want to tell them the greatest friend that you've ever had, who is Jesus Christ. Let's be that type of friends this week. Uh, that's the beginning of a real friendship. Let me pray for us. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you 
uh, that we could open your word, that we could be together, that we could discuss today what it means to be a friend, to be a part of a community. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the different ways that we can build into our faith that you've given us in Scripture. Help us to discuss what it means to always protect, to always trust, to always hope, to persevere and never quit. Um, Heavenly Father, we want to be that type of people with godly character who never give up, who belong, who are trustworthy friends. And thank you that you've modeled that to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. That concludes our video. Have a great discussion in uh, your life group today.